Hello everybody, so my name is Anne Harad Jones and I am a lecturer in healthcare education over in Aberystwyth University. Um, my background is I'm a registered nurse, I've worked in secondary care, um, I did some further training and I've worked in um, school health and uh, community care and then I went into nurse education supporting student nurses whilst they're out on clinical practice and supporting mentors who then support the student nurses whilst they're out in clinical practice and I've also worked in rural healthcare research as well before joining the team here at Aberystwyth so hopefully bringing a wealth of information and experiences and skills to the team to, to support this brand new scheme that's been running next year. So the session uh, this evening, and thank you all for, for joining us this evening, is looking at how you prepare for your nursing student selection event here at the university. I will ask, there is a bit of a, a participation element in a few slides time, so if you have smartphones or devices to hand, that would be really useful. So selection events, let's get the slide going. So the admission process to pre-registration nursing or midwifery courses, they're complex and competitive. They're competitive because there are only a finite number available any, you know, any year. And they're also complex because we're looking for different attributes or assessing different attributes and characteristics which are associated with nursing. And one of those is, you know, the ability to deliver compassionate care. And that's kind of been scrutinised over the past few years, really, with reviews happening and policy developments sort of being brought in and whilst that was happening it was decided to look really at how we best select students to come into to nursing courses and from an all Wales basis um, a values based approach was thought that would be the best way forward so from an all Wales basis um, the, the student selection is based on different characteristics and attributes that people can display and be nurtured towards being a very competent and, and compassionate nurse. So this is a snippet from the All Wales Principles really and it just sort of underlines that for a future nursing workforce to be able to practice in that professional manner it needs to have people coming into the to the profession with the, the qualities and values that can be nurtured so we're not looking at this point in time at a finished article you know we're not looking for somebody who can display everything and anything and be that sort of ideal nurse but we are looking for people who are able to display those qualities and what types of values that they have that they can bring to nursing and then we can um, develop and nurture those skills throughout the program so this is the um, participation element. So if I can ask um, those joining us, if you're able to um, open a, a, an additional web browser, but please don't log off the, the webinar, but if you're able to join uh, vbox.app, and there's a, a link and an ID code up there, because what you're asking for is, so what are characteristics? What are these attributes? What are these values? So what are we actually looking for? So just before we discuss that, I thought it might be a good idea to think about what do you think those, those, those characteristics are. So you can put different words in, um, you can put um, more, more than one attempt at different words. So we'll give it a minute or so just to see if people can, um, can upload. And if you're having difficulty, just type some words into the chat and we can look at, um, we can look at the words and, and the characteristics through there as well. So we've got four people um, entering some words. So you, things to consider about the types of attributes and characteristics that if you were a patient and you were being nursed by somebody, what are the things that you would be looking for in that nurse, you know? And just to help people off, I would be thinking of caring or compassionate. We mentioned that a bit earlier as well. So those, those are a couple. A couple more left to come in, I think. And also, as Chantal says in the um, chat, we um, we can sort of take um, anything from the chat as well. So we've got some sort of suggestions from Carol too. So uh, when you're ready, um, Angharad, just uh, we've got some in the chat as well. That's brilliant. Oh, one more's just come in. 
Right, we'll have a go. Let's have a see. And if this works. There we go. Here is a word cloud. So again, it's just a um, compilation of everything that's, uh, that, that you've uploaded, which is great. So yeah, you're looking for, like I said, giving a bit of a game away, really, a caring personality and that compassionate sort of ability to deliver care. Honesty is always a good one because um, nursing is regulated by the Nursing and Midwifery Council. So you're looking at honesty and integrity in your approach to patient care. Um, dignity and respect are big drivers in relation to how we treat people. So that is something, again, you know, that we'll be looking at. So even though perhaps in a selection event, if there's no real life patient situation, you know, it's, it is very much here in the healthcare education centre. But we would be looking at how, how do you respect and how do you, how do you sort of um, display these behaviours in that sort of environment, just, you know, just to, to your colleagues, just to different peer groups and things as well. Being kind, that is really important because I don't think, you know, nursing, it goes hand in hand really, isn't it, about being kind to our patients and to our colleagues and to the families and to our service users that rely on our care. Kindness, um, trust, again, that's really important because of the confidentiality, again, that's mentioned there as well. You know, we have um, possession of so much information about people in terms of their, of their physical care, of their social care. So again, people need to have a trust in, that, in us as a profession so that we deal with their information in a secure way, but also then that we're able to, to nurse those patients the best we can with that knowledge that we can help and support them. Harm is a nice one because, you know, going into nursing, it is a challenging environment and some uh, ward areas and some units can have different paces as well. So again, it's thinking about how you cope with different circumstances and the different situations that arise in clinical practice. Um, competence is something that we definitely be looking to, to nurture as well. Because as a, as a nurse, especially, you know, with the new Nursing and Referee Council um, competencies that have come in over the last few years, you know, when you register as a nurse, when you finish the course, there is an expectation that, you know, that you're out there in clinical practice and that you're competent in the skills that you deliver as well. So, yes, we're, we're looking at sort of the ability to, to somebody so that we can develop their skills. And motivated, that's a nice one as well. Again, because, you know, you need somebody who is enthusiastic, who's really eager to, to deliver that care. Was there any more in the chat, Rob, that was different? Absolutely, yeah. Um, some uh, completely echo what uh, others have shared, and there's some um, new ones in there as well. So Carol was saying compassion, caring, respectful, sensitive. Um, we had that. from Danielle, good listener and empathetic. Um, Pat is suggesting non-biased, um, which is interesting as well. Um, and uh, D uh, Dondre is uh, saying sympathetic. Um, and Pat, understanding, uh, that's another um, suggestion from Pat. And then uh, Keris, non-verbal and verbal communication. So the skills around that. The really great yeah. ones uh, in the chat yeah, as well as what was sent. Brilliant. And non-bias is something that, again, is really important. Not, not that that not all are important, but non-bias and being non-judgmental because we will be dealing you know, with so many people, you know, from different parts of society. And it's important that as a profession that we deal deal with, with patients and the members of the public, their carers, you know, in the exact same manner that we were professional in our approach to how we deal with people. So it is really important that we have that non-bias and non-judgmental attitude as well. And I guess from a, a sort of nursing selection event, it's just thinking about how, how you reflect these values. So selection events versus interviews. So the selection events is something new that's happened in the last sort of few years, really, because nursing has always had interviews. So, and nobody likes interviews because I think everybody gets nervous, everybody gets very stressed about it, everybody thinks they've probably done worse than what they actually have. And, but it is a lot of pressure on an individual, especially with nursing if it's competitive, like I said earlier, and there are only a finite number of places. It's that crunch moment, isn't it, about wanting to make sure that you get it right. And interviews, you know, somebody's mind can go blank, you can ask that question and you have no answer. 
So there was a lot of discussion, especially when they were looking at thinking about how do we then assess values and qualities when it comes to selecting our future workforce. So it was de de deemed that selection events were possibly, you know, a better way to, to, to do that. So what do we mean by a selection event? So a selection event, you're assessed more than once. So it's not this one interview, and if you do badly, your mind goes blank, you can't answer questions. Um, it's not that situation. So it is a situation where you will be assessed more than once, and you'll be assessed um, doing different activities. So if you're perhaps thinking that you're weak in one activity, then you can have an opportunity to have a go again, you know. So it's not this just one hit wonder thing that interviews historically were, that people can have different um, chances at making sure that they, they do the best that they can. And also they're assessed by a variety of people. So the tasks um, and the activities that are within a selection event, different people will be assessing those. So if you think that you've done particularly poorly in one element and, and you weren't sure about how you came across and you're thinking, oh, somebody's you know, maybe assessed me quite low, then your next um, activity will be totally different with different people and different um, assessors there to do that. So it is a more rounded event. Make sure that you have different opportunities to shine and show the qualities that you bring to the table. So what does it look like? So university, our selection events are half day sessions, so it's either a morning or an afternoon session. And if you're selected to come to a, a selection event, you'll have a brief overview of the nursing programme and what's on offer here in Aberystwyth. You'll then have an opportunity to meet the healthcare education team. You can ask questions, you know, you can ask about the programme, you can ask about how the arrangements are. Um, you can also meet different partners, which I'll go into in a minute. But if you're wanting to know more about clinical practice or um, wanting to talk to other people that are, are present, then, you know, it, it's an informal situation where people can, can do that. And if um, you haven't been to the university for an open day, we can also arrange for you to see the university's facilities as well, maybe the accommodation, um, so that you can see that the healthcare education centre within the university forms part of a wider student experience. So there'll be two group activities. So again, like I say, they'll be assessed very separately and there will be different activities. So there'll be two group activities. There'll be one one-to-one -one scenario or a role play activity, and there will be one mini interview. So it's not like historically the, the, the interviews that you would think of before, but certainly there'll be an element of, of being able to bring that personal um, approach to, to the selection event. We can uh, facilitate selection events in the Welsh language, but we would need to be aware of that beforehand so that we can make sure that those present at each selection event um, can, can speak Welsh to support people's language preferences in that way. Who will be there? So we will be there. So all of us on the webinar tonight will be there supporting, supporting the selection events. And we'll also be having our practice learning partners, which is our clinical colleagues there as well. So we'll be having, you know, the nurses and colleagues from clinical practice, which is again, a good opportunity if you're wanting to ask questions about what it's like in clinical practice, you know, they will be here and they can help support you. And they can also explain to you the support you'll get in clinical practice, because obviously the course is 50% theory and 50% in the clinical area. So they can explain and outline the support and, and how you learn in clinical area. Really importantly, we'll have service users, carers and members of the public present as well. Um, the Nursing and Midwifery Council really emphasise the importance of, of their involvement. And really, when you think about it, if, if they're if they are our clients, you know, we are there delivering their care, then they then should really have a say in who delivers that care, because they have a very different perspective of um, receiving healthcare services. So it is important that we work in partnership with our service users, carers and members of the public in here in, from the Mid Wales area. And it's also a very good way for students to learn as well. So um, within the programme, they will feature, you know, heavily throughout the three years with us. We'll have student ambassadors as well. So I know um, somebody asked a question slightly earlier about our students. 
we have no students at the moment to recant, you know, what it's like to, to study nursing here at Aberystwyth. And hopefully, you know, with, with years to come, that will change with our student cohorts being very much part of the, our student selection event. But we will have student ambassadors here from, from other courses, and they can talk to students about what it's like to study here at Aberystwyth in a, in a wider context. And to make sure that they understand, you know, the, the student experience that is here and the facilities to support students learning as well. The things to think about at your um, selection event is preparation. So, like I said, we're not expecting you to come to a selection event well versed in all these quotes, having read all sorts of journals, knowing everything about what's going on in, in nursing. But it would be useful if you can start having a think about or certainly having a read about the main current topics that are affecting nursing and healthcare, and that you're able to speak to a little about it if you're asked to. Um, there is an All Wales Recruitment and Selection Principles document, so it might be useful for you to have a read of that, just again to, to see what sort of things that we'll be looking looking at assessing, and, and again thinking about what you need to bring to the selection event in order to make sure that you can really display those characteristics, which kind of leads on then to the impression that you want to give, you know, to think about how you demonstrate those qualities and those values how you can sort of role model them or how you can talk to them. So making sure that they really shine through for you, but also make sure that they're relevant because we don't want you to be doing, you know, um, or displaying values if just to, just to make us, you know, just to, just to please us, you know, they, they need to be within you and you need to be honest about how they come across, you know, because as a nurse, you need to have one of the words that was there before, honesty and integrity and making sure that they're relevant to the nursing profession. And above and for all, you know, just be yourself really, because if you're interested in nursing, we've looked at the qualities and values and you're all saying, you know, the very things that we need for our nursing workforce. And it's really just making sure that be yourself. And, and that's the best thing I can sort of suggest really in terms of how you, how you um, prepare and how you come across on the day. And really, it's it's over to you then in thinking about 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 coming to an event and thinking about how how you want to how you want to come across and have that ability to shine. And good luck. Any questions? Just while we're waiting for questions, I initially thought about um, you know the AM and PM events and how that works for people that are coming from. Uh, quite a distance away, for example. So Kira mentioned uh, that she's in Ireland. I mean, how, do, how does that work, you know, for people that are traveling quite a distance to uh, Aberystwyth? It's something that we would discuss with those that we invite, really, because we would need to know that if they're traveling a distance, it would it be a morning session or an afternoon session that would be preferable to them? Because when we run a session, we run them for a whole day. So it's um, so once the people are here and, and we're, we're facilitating event, we're here for the day. So it is really trying to fit in with everybody's availability because it is a challenge to get you know all the healthcare staff, all the clinicians, the service users, and and also the, you know the applicants together. So if students are travelling from afar, it's to contact us and to let us know if there are particular preferences that would enable them to to, to join because we don't want to put anybody at a disadvantage. Danielle is asking, what do the group activities involve? So what would that look like, Angharad? It could be um, different things. So it could be debates, it could be different discussions, it could be, you know, various team building activities, or it could be sort of um, other, other sorts of activities. So not wanting to give the game away in relation to what we've got planned here in Aberystwyth, but certainly there'll be a variety of things. So. Yeah, different different elements like that. So there'll be certainly a discussion or a, or a debate that we'll we'll be looking at um, facilitating, but then more more of a practical um, uh, activity as well. That's brilliant. Thank you for the question, Danielle. Uh, Chelsea is asking when are the student selection events going to take place, and how will we know if we have a student selection selection? So maybe we'll go to Amanda here because I know that you were going to have a little. Uh, just rest your voice for a moment, and, <laughs> but maybe Amanda could uh, respond there as well. 
Absolutely. Thanks, Rob. So our first student selection event is planned for the beginning of December. So as we know, UCAS opened on the 7th of September. So we're seeing the applications come in already. So um, Anghara Dunbledin, who are our admissions tutors, will be working through those applications shortly. Um, and the individuals who um, can be invited to a selection event from their applications will be offered um, to come in December and then we've got dates running through January through to the beginning of February. As we know UCAS um, has extended its um, submission date from mid-January to the end of January but what I would encourage is um, if you really want um, to apply for a place on the nursing schemes in Aberystwyth University is that you do get your applications in sooner rather than later. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Amanda. Um, I know we've had a couple of questions. So Dellen was asking for other opportunities to uh, get involved and uh, come, uh, you know, other than open days. And uh, I know, I think, uh, Amanda, you've shared the link there for Dellen. So hopefully that will give you um, some extra opportunities. And uh, I know Chelsea had asked a question about how many are in the student selection uh, event and uh, Bletherne has answered 21 for that. So. Uh, Danielle uh, has asked, do we all undergo the same interview, adult and mental health, or is it specific to your course preference? So that's a great question, Danielle. Um, I'm looking at you, Amanda. Do you want to just uh, respond to that? Yeah, thank you. No, for the for the because of the first year of the program is exactly the same for both adult and mental health fields of nursing. And as Ang Harrod has explained, it's a values based approach. It's an all Wales approach. So regardless of the field of nursing, and that wouldn't only be for Aberystwyth University, it would be for any university that you apply to study nursing within Wales. Everybody um, undertakes the same student selection event for equality and parity as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, and so Chelsea's saying this isn't related to student selection directly, but how many people do you expect to apply? So shall I go back to you, Amanda, on that? And then for the next question, we'll come to Ang Harad. Yeah, okay. that's fine. So um, at the moment, we've got um, over 20 applicants who have applied already. Um, we do have 50 spaces available, 35 for adult um, field and 15 for mental health. Um, it's difficult to say at the moment how many we're expecting because it's a, it's a new course. But what I can say is that we've had a great deal of interest through our um, open days, through our taster sessions, through email correspondence that we've had. There is a great deal of um, interest. Hence why I'm encouraging participants who really want to consider nursing as a career um, to get your applications in sooner rather than later. Brilliant. Thank you. And thank you, Chelsea, for that. Um, Keris is asking, will the nursing course be the same for the undergraduates in 2023 or will it be changed in any way? So, Angharad, uh, I said we'd come to you for the next question. Uh, would you like to respond to to uh, Keris's question, please. So our nursing programme has been approved by the Nursing and Midwifery Council. We had our approval event earlier this year. So we've, have, we've, written, we've written our modules, we know what our assessment methods are. Um, so, so we know in advance really what we are planning to run. So the structure will remain the same, um, or we envisage that the structure will be remaining the same. But going forward, obviously with feedback from our student body, from our clinical colleagues, and there might be tweaks that we, we put in or feel that we, ne we may need to, to do as we're going forward, because obviously things are changing always in healthcare, topics are, are changing. So there might be, um, you know, different sessions at different times, or there might be different sort of perspectives to be put in. But I know the structure will remain um, much the same, but it, it will be fluid. Perfect. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Keris, for the question. Uh, just while we're waiting for another um, uh, question from you, um, I've got a question for you as well as an audience. Um, so I know that with this sort of thing, you can feel quite excited, but also quite daunted um, by the whole prospect of visiting a university and um, taking part in this type of interview and selection event. Um, 
maybe you could just sort of post in the chat what you would feel excited about and perhaps what you might feel a bit daunted about, a bit nervous. So, you, you know, if there's anything you'd like to share there, that'd be really interesting to know because I know everyone approaches it very differently. So, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll look out for your responses there, but also any other questions that you're um, sort of considering as well. Um, so we'll look out for those too. What, what environment would it be in Angharad, um, you know, in terms of the selection event? Where, you know, where would it be in the university? What would the room look like? And, what, you know, how would it be set up um, physically, I, I guess? So the selection events are run out of the Healthcare Education Centre. So it's just across the road from the main campus. So everything will be done within the centre. So there'll be, I know Blethyn uh, mentioned there'll be 21 um, applicants coming to, to each event, each half day event, and they'll be separated into groups. So it might be loud in the rooms because um, we're thinking about three groups of seven to, to do the, the different activities with. So it might be busy because we'll have, obviously us as, as a lecturing team will be there, we'll have our clinical colleagues there, we'll have service users, um, carers and members of the public here as well, and our, and our student ambassadors. So it'll be a busy environment, um, but we'll be using the whole of the healthcare centre, education centre, so there'll be a teaching room here upstairs, and also the, some of the clinical suites downstairs may be used for breakout sessions if the rooms get too noisy, but we'll be using the, the whole of the centre. Fantastic. And, and where would you draw your students from? So you talked about ambassadors from different um, parts of um, the university. I mean, where would, what would they be typically studying and, um, uh, or is it mainly just about the sort of uh, student lifestyle type of uh, um, you know, input that they could have? Obviously, Aberystwyth, um, they, they offer a whole wealth of, of um, different undergraduate and postgraduate courses, and nursing is the first um, health education course they're running. So our student ambassadors come, could come from any of the, of the undergrad courses that are run, and will be sort of directed and, and assisted by our marketing team, really, in, in making sure that we get you know, the student ambassadors across for, for our applicants to chat to. But it was about uh, making sure that they know what facilities the university have to offer in relation to supporting their studies, because nursing is very different, because 50% of the time they'll be out in practice, and our practice learning partners will be here to, to help them sort of understand how to, to learn in those sorts of environments. Um, but our student ambassadors from any of the courses can explain about our library facilities, our IS facilities, you know, about um, the, the student unions and the support that's available there, and also from our student support and wellbeing teams as well, just to make sure that they know that um, if they come to, to us in Aberystwyth, there is a wider sort of package of, of um, university resources available to them. And it's just making sure that um, prospective applicants know what's on offer for them to support their student journey. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, we've got some responses. Thank you very much, Dylan and um, Chelsea as well, in terms of being excited and perhaps being a bit nervous at the same time. So Dylan's saying, um, excited to see the facilities and how it will benefit those wanting to do the adult nursing stroke mental health degree. Nervous for meeting people or meeting those on the course and for what activities will be run. So we maybe you can um, uh, talk about that in a mo moment. But Chelsea, just to add to that, so for me, I'm quite excited about the student selection event and being able to speak to more people about the course in person. I think I'm most worried about the one-to-one -one sessions, but I think that just comes from not attending anything similar to this before. So I think both what Dylan said and Chelsea said, that they're sort of slightly different and, and perhaps um, uh, opposites in some ways, but uh, I think it shows you know, how people will approach and feel when they're coming to these events. Is, is there anything, uh, perhaps I'll come to Amanda here, but is there anything you, you'd say to Dylan or uh, Chelsea around those, that excitement and around those sort of nerves around the activities and the one-to-ones and, and that sort of thing? So Amanda. Yeah, absolutely. And think about meeting other people on these selection events will be opportunities for those individuals maybe studying with you in the future. And I know that I've been a registered nurse for nearly 30 years and I've got made friends for life 
that actually um, undertook their nurse training with me. And we've all gone off in different pathways in the future, but we all still keep in touch. And in relation to um, the one-to-one -one sessions, I'd want you to think of it more as a chat rather than somebody just firing questions at you. There'll be some set questions and those questions will be the same questions asked by every academic to every candidate. So please don't feel that anybody's gonna be asked anything different. And it's about us getting to know you. So it's a, a kind of, if, if you've been a little bit quieter, maybe in one of the group activities, then it's about drawing the best out of you within those questions. Um, and allowing us to get to know uh, and having a feel for you as an individual as well. And it gives you the opportunity to ask us questions as well. Great, thank you, Amanda. And uh, Danielle um, has shared something as well, which is really interesting. Um, so excited to take another step closer to gaining a place on a mental health nursing course, but nervous about the debate, discussion, try not to get my voice or trying to get my voice across, but not to overshadow others or be overshadowed by others. So it's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I would think, Amanda, that uh, Danielle's recognition of that is a massive step in terms of giving the right impression that, that Danielle's very aware of, um, you know, allowing others to have space and but finding space for herself. But how would you, um, you know, talk to Danielle around that sort of concern about and, and finding your place within that group discussion? Absolutely, Danielle. It's a huge step. If somebody recognises that, you know, they're fearful that they may overshadow somebody or be too quiet, what I'd want to reassure you there is, um, as academics, we're also present within those groups as well. So we kind of facilitate in the same way that Rob does on these sessions as well. So if we can see that uh, maybe one candidate is rather quieter than somebody else, we will draw that individual in and we may turn to you and say so so what do you think about the, this situation so we'll try and encourage to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to get their voice heard and if for example that somebody is overshadowing then we can nurture them and, and just say um, that's fantastic let's give so and so an opportunity now and bring them in as well so it ensures that everybody has an opportunity to to provide their uh, knowledge and information in that debate as well. And I think the fact that you're asking that question shows self-awareness of the, you know, the issues involved in a group debate. So again, I think, you know, you're thinking about it, you're thinking about the impression you want to give. And again, you know, that's really positive. Brilliant. Uh, thank you, Angharad. Thank you, Amanda. And yeah, um, great points, uh, Danielle there. So thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, so yeah, Chelsea is asking, uh, how much does each part regarding student selection help our application? If we don't seem confident or even feel a little bit nervous about it all, would that have a negative impact on our overall uh, application? So uh, Angharad, uh, do you want to respond to Chelsea on that one? You know, everybody's going to be nervous, you know, if you go to an interview or at one of these our selection events, you know, it is going to be because you're so wanting this place on the course and like I say, the there are finite numbers, so everybody wants to do well. So the fact that somebody is nervous, you know, we're not going to be holding that against anybody at all. It's really just an opportunity to let those values and those characteristics that we, we spoke about earlier shine through. And if you're nervous, don't worry, you know, none of us bite. And hopefully you, you can see us on, on the, these webinars that, um, that we're here to help you. We're not here to trip anybody up. And like Amanda says, if, if we are noticing that somebody's really nervous or there's, there's somebody really quiet, you know, we, we'll, we'll pick that up and we'll, we'll, we'll pull you into the conversations and we'll pull you into the activities. So it, we're not looking, like I say, we're not looking at sort of individuals in these events who, who are going to, that are the end result, you know, who are these nurses, you know, we're looking at people who have the ability to, to show those characteristics and also to show those that they, they're wanting to be a nurse and, and they're willing to be developed. So nervousness or apprehension about these events, that, 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 that's going to happen. You know, we will be probably nervous as well with you to wanting to make sure that everybody does really, really well, um, but not to worry about it at all. 
Brilliant. Thank you, Anghad, and thank you for the uh, honest question there, Chelsea, as well. So, uh, Carol uh, is asking, if we are lucky enough to get a place, when do we find out? So, um, I'll go to Amanda this time. When, when would people find out about um, their places? Rob, this may be the opportunity to bring Blethyn in, if that's okay. Blethyn's one of our admissions tutors as well for mental health. So before Blethyn answers that question, if anybody does have any specific questions in relation to mental health nursing um, or any questions, we also have Sally Hall, who's our principal lead on the call this evening, um, who um, uh, is our head of nursing. So if you do have any specific questions that you'd like to ask Sally, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to answer as well. So is Bled in there? We lost Yes, him. I'm here. Oh, yeah. fantastic. So as Angara said, um, the applications are now coming in for the places for the uh, adult and mental health nursing to commence in September next year. So Howard and I will be going through and filtering the applications, um, making sure that all the requirements are met. And there will be an acknowledgement email going out to people that we've actually received your application and it's in process. And then we'll be looking at taking into account lots of different factors in terms of geographical location, where people are in terms of inviting people in. And as we said earlier on, giving them the option for that um, selection day, whether it's AM or PM. And then we have scheduled in some extra dates for next year to bear in mind that we are entering the winter period now. So just in case there are people having to cancel their event due to adverse weather conditions. And then later on in the year, um, there'll be uh, the different the various types of offered made so it's depending on what your background is whether you've got the requirements to study at the moment or whether you're still in school and doing your a-levels or college or further education for example and awaiting results later on next summer and then there'll be um <coughs> the offers made so it's down to sort of individual basis but um and Harrod and I are trying to work our way now so that we can sort of be in communication and people know that we are looking at your applications, looking at your personal statements and um, looking forward really to meet a big bunch of 50 nurses next year. Brilliant. And Levin, just while, uh, before we come to Keris's question, um, just, just thinking about mental health and, and uh, adult nursing, when you're within these um, selection events, for mental health, is there anything specific that you'd be looking for that would perhaps be different from adult nursing? Is there, is there anything particular that you would look for that's different? I think going back to what Angharad has said about the values, um, that's what we're looking for. So whether you're working in a um, adult environment or a um, mental health environment or even if somebody has education elsewhere and they do children or learning disability it's those core values as a nurse um, and we've got our um, code of practice as registered nurses as well so for us it's looking at those individuals and as Amanda said coming to start the pre-registration education as a nurse and it's about how they can develop and then by the end of the three years that they're registering with the nursery and midwifery midwifery council as sort of caring compassionate nurses brilliant thank you Bledin, for that and um we will come back to so keris has um asked a question about um sort of learning welsh for welsh speaking patients and i know amanda you've responded to that in the chat but but generally for students that are working in wales as a nurse um are there what is there any issue around uh, the need to speak welsh at all for for the benefit of the uh, particular patients um and perhaps you could respond to to that question as well please amanda 
Yeah, absolutely. So we know that there are a high percentage of um, patients within the locality that we're delivering nurse education in who are fluent Welsh speakers, and that wouldn't disadvantage any of our um, non-Welsh speaking applicants. What we've included within the curriculum is some conversational Welsh sessions called um, Codnell Coffee at Clonk, which is a coffee and chat corner, and um, they've been um, included within the curriculum to develop some basic conversational skills for non-Welsh speakers. Um, so even if it's about learning just parts of the body and the word for pain, that will support and benefit you within your clinical placements. But not only that, the patients and the service users that you're caring for as well. So any fluent Welsh speakers um, who are on the course would be encouraged to be involved also in supporting their peers in developing some very basic Welsh language skills. So it's not about trying to get everybody fluent through the medium of Welsh and of course we'd support that if anybody really wanted to take um, take it all the way but the important bit is is just managing to have some conversational Welsh but ensuring that it's related to the care that you're providing. Fabulous thank you very much Amanda and uh, we are very close to time now and uh, we have come to the end of the questions uh, that you've posted um, on the chat. So, um, so I think we will bring the session to a close uh, and just Can I just to... make, sorry Rob, to interrupt. Can I just yeah. make one point? I know Blevin was saying about our offers as well, because obviously our offers are based on the academic criteria and also about the values-based assessments within our selection event. Um, it's worth looking at our web pages just to confirm all the criteria because they will, we will also be looking when provisional offers are being made to applicants that we will be asking for occupational health check and DBS checks as well, just for people to be aware. But look at our web pages just to, to um, have more information about those. That's really helpful. Thank you, Anghad. And uh, I know those um, have been posted earlier as well, but Chantal, perhaps uh, if you're able to just, uh, or Amanda, perfect. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, thank you ever so much for everyone who's taken part today. We'd, um, we've really uh, enjoyed hearing from you today and over the last um, few weeks uh, in the various sessions. And it's been brilliant to have your passion, interest, questions, thoughts. It's really valuable for us.